transportation in the previous session, which has been held in the and the meeting room, just opposed to this. Uh, but the issues remain uh, with the food and vegetable process sector is like uh, the losses. When Sifa took up that study, the losses are still much higher than what has been reported in the study. Though I was part of the institute which did that study, but then I feel that somewhere we have missed on the losses in the retail chain. We have missed on the losses which are happening at the retailers level to the transportation. So this is something which is, uh, the fruits and vegetables are uh, susceptible to losses that everybody knows. And a lot of innovations in this area are coming up. We are going to discuss uh, these innovations with uh, the worthy panelists who are present here. And uh, so it's, it's a pleasure for me to have uh, uh, the worthy panelist, uh, Mr. Naresh Java, who is uh, from uh, Vekun. I mean, there is another arm of Vekul, which is, and this is one company which I know for the last about eight years. They started around uh, that time, um, it was 2014, when they started? 2015. 15, yes. So I know them from about 2016. And uh, there is one technology that we transferred to them in 2017. So that's how we got connected to them, and Karthik himself come over. over. And uh, no, this is one company which started from a scratch and now built very big in supply chain of food vegetables, not went into staples, they began to rice and biryanis and many things. And uh, the, the, the most of the logic there was to see that we aggregate those technologies which are present in different ecosystems, different universities, institutes, plug them together and see that whichever is feasible for a particular crop, take that or for a particular product, take that and move forward. And they were operating from a, a place which was, you know, which was inhabited by a vegetable mandi there in Chennai at that point in time. So welcome, uh, Mr. Jama. I'm sure that we're going to have a very good time when we discuss a lot of things. And if uh, somebody can just call up uh, Mahmoud Hande. And uh, we have uh, Mr. Mahesh Kanchan from uh, the Delmont, the Fresh Foods uh, Private Limited. And Delmont, as you know, is a uh, lot of the processed products also. They have third party arrangements. They have they have their own, uh, you see those Delmont pineapple uh, juice cans, and especially during Diwali time, you find a lot of gift hampers containing a variety of uh, juices. So, uh, welcome, uh, sir, and I hope that uh, we're going to have a, a good deliberation processing aspect also. Now, uh, how to curb those losses? Everybody knows the losses are there. We talk about the supply chain, we talk about the value chain. I would just want to know from any of you what is the difference between supply chain and value chain. Just, just a thought about it. You know, I can answer more about it. But if I have to ask you, what is supply chain and what is value chain? Any of my students who are here? Just, just give a thought. Sir, so supply chain means sir, supply of anything. For example, vegetables. Uh, fruits, but in value chain, we added value in the product than supply. That that right. is called value right. chain. Right. So you are adding value at each point in the supply chain. That is the value chain. For example, uh, now uh, uh, if Vekul purchases uh, onions from a farmer, right? They do the retopping of the onion and grade them. They grading a, a grade of 30 to 45 mm, which is the one to be a kg higher than they sell in the market. And it gives that the benefits passed to the farmer. So that is you are adding value to the business. And when you process it, the value gets enhanced. Correct. So uh, I welcome my uh, very good friend Dr. Prabhu Dhande. He is uh, he's a man who works with uh, Merico. And he is uh, heading the regulatory division of Merico. And he was a moderator for the previous session on the serial process staples. And uh, he made sure that everybody who was here, there in the hall, got some hampers, gift hampers, and I uh, don't know. They were all walking, they were all laughing around the wall, enjoying the stroll to different halls. Hopefully, I mean, uh, we will also get some uh, Delmont Lake uh, gift hampers if, uh, if it's permitted by uh, my esteemed fellows represent here. Now, uh, enhancing the shelf life of fruits and vegetables is a real big challenge. For the simple reason, because high moisture content, different seasons, storage conditions are different. If you look at the vegetable, vegetable storage, especially the leafies, you require a pressure about 4 to 5 degrees. But if you have to store fruit, you require a pressure about 10 to 20 degrees. And within mangoes, you find there is a gradient. 
Our science will stay well at about 12 degrees, and then the farming policy stays well at about 14 degrees. Supporters supply best at 15 degrees. So there's a huge difference in the storage profile, which is required to enhance the shelf life of fruits and vegetables. How do we encounter that? Second problem is, unlike uh, the staples grains, here the surface area is much larger. The area of the fruit and vegetable is much larger compared to the grains. As a result, there are problems with spawning tissue and macro, there are problems of uh, anthracnose in chilies, and then there's a huge investment which goes into preventing those diseases, uh, the pests, through the pest management practices. And a lot of pesticides that get into the whole ecosystem. But then, <coughs> let me start first with uh, uh, Mr. Kanchan and know from him <coughs> that what is it that uh, the company and his own perspective about improving the packaging as well as preservation techniques for improving the shelf life of fruits and vegetables, as well as what kind of market perspective the company thinks. They're not was they entered into the market, uh, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around about 15 years, 20, 20, 13 years back, they had a, 20 years back when they had a, they put up a plant in uh, Badawan in Haryana, uh, close to Haryana, where they were grading carrots and the packaging and exporting them also and the thing. So, how far have we gone in that journey and what have been the influences and where do you think are the grey areas which need to be curbed and so that we improve the shelf life and what is the kind of market scenario that you see for uh, you know more packaging and preservation in Sure. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Robert. First, before I started in California, in western US, and uh, the whole purpose of the brand was to bring in fruits, vegetables, and any farm products from the farm to the fork of the table. So it's exactly what resonated with the theme today, which is harvest to the plate. So it's exactly that sort of uh, uh, and the brand stood for quality. So one of the initial pioneers of tanning as a technology, it's a, one of the finest technologies from a packaging point of view to keep the produce fresh or as good as fresh for a long period of time. So canned pineapples that Del Monte is really well known for, it's something that started back in California and now it spreads into the garden and plus and things. So that's a little about Del Monte here in India, it's a joint venture Tati Enterprises and Del Monte Pacific. Uh, we have uh, factories down south. Uh, we have in the north of Louisiana as well. So, so let me start uh, by starting by saying that food always, yeah, whenever you consume food fresh, it's the best, no doubt about it. But that's not always not possible. You know, if I have to give you a story about it, say, you're a part of an armed force, and if you are in the sea action border, it's very difficult for you to consume fresh food. So, you know. I came a technology called a retort technology by which you can ensure that the Indian army can get food and there's no kitchen there, so probably they can it's a it's a already a retort technology is something where you you take food and heat it at a very high temperature, you know, in a packaging itself. So by that the food remains almost fresh. You can open it and heat it as it. So that's something that's used for the Indian Army back in the border. So food plays a very critical role there. So as I said, food is Always good if you consume it fresh, but that's not always possible. Uh, so it's not just about, Mr. Aura asked me, how do you enhance the shelf life? So it's not just about enhancing shelf life. As he rightly said, it's also about adding value to the food. So if I give you, I'll give you two examples. Let's say, let's take an example of tomato. Tomato is a fruit that we deal with. You can sell raw tomatoes, which would probably fetch you 40, 50 rupees, depending on what the price prevails per kilo. Or you could add value to it and get a higher realization per kilo. I'll just give an example. So if you convert tomato into a paste, the same 40 rupees or 20 rupees a kilo moves to almost 70 rupees or plus. You convert that into a puree, you probably take that 70 to about 100 plus. You convert that probably into a sauce or a ketchup, you could take it to maybe about 100 you take it to a soup powder, a tomato soup powder, it would go beyond a 300, 400 plus. If you convert it to a gourmet sauce, which can be used on topping a pizza or a pasta, uh, it would go with chunks in it like a salsa, etc. That would go to 600, 700, 800 kilo plus. So, one is you need to figure out 
which part of the value chain you want to participate in. There is a market for the raw tomato sold in 20, 30 rupees a kilo. There is a big market. And there's a small market, of course, at the highest end of the value chain where your realization and profitability is extremely high. You need to decide where you want to be in. And if I have to give you another example of something like a coffee, uh, you could sell uh, a coffee bean uh, as a commodity, or you could be a gourmet coffee chain which sells coffee with a great experience. And there are intermediaries, like right? you could mix the coffee, grind the coffee, mix it with chicory, and make it into a basic uh, coffee powder, uh, like, like a roast and ground coffee powder, get a little higher valuation. You make it into an instant coffee, get a little higher valuation than there, which is like classic coffees that you have in the market. Or you go ahead and move it from a typical agglomerated coffee to you take it to a freeze dried coffee. Like you have the gold coffees, the Aeron name brands, like the gold varieties of coffee, which are freeze dried coffee. You, you take it up, there are 100 grams fetches you almost 500 rupees for a, for a freeze dried coffee. Likewise, a decaf coffee will also fetch you a lot of money. But the highest end of the value chain would be a gourmet coffee, coffee father or a coffee chain where you give an experience, not just a coffee. So it all depends on where you want to be in the value chain. Now, coming to uh, food gates point, yeah, so who are the enemies of food? And something happens to the food or the beverage in the division gates point. There are some enemies and tannins which spoil food. So obviously the simple ones that come into our mind would be pests, yeah, pesticides, etc. Et you have microorganisms as well. But believe me, the, the, some of the biggest enemies of food is oxygen. Air, some food needs air, some food, oxygen or air is a, is a, is a big enemy. Uh, and it's important for us, but it's, 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 not, it's not good for food. So you have to keep food away from oxygen. Oxygen barrier properties are required. Then another, another enemy of food at times is light. You know, food, oil especially, if it gets struck with light, it, the color actually fades and you know, all of other, even beverages when it gets light struck, sun struck actually uh, goes back. So light or sun rays also is one of the enemies of food. Uh, another enemy of food could be temperature. If temperature fluctuations happen, food could go back. I mean, uh, that's another area of uh, saying so. These are different enemies I'm calling of food. And there are technologies now by which you could keep these enemies at bay. I mean, say, keep away from my food so that my food lasts a little longer, it remains as fresh as it's intended to. So, I could touch upon two areas. One is, uh, sir asked me on processing, second he asked me on packaging. Uh, let's start with processing. I gave you a flavor of some. One was, uh, we spoke about retort. It's a technology uh, which we use as well. Let's say if you look at a Del Monte baked beans, it's a retort technology. So, your, your baked beans, which you typically will find in a five-star hotel or home, you use it for breakfast. Uh, it's nothing but beans going into a sauce and it's heated at a very high temperature and it's preserved in a can. And there, believe me, we get a lot of 36 months of shelf life. That's absolutely brilliant from, from not that I'm encouraging people to extend shelf life, but it gives you a fairly good shelf life. A simple one that people would have heard, which is probably everybody gets touched upon, is pasteurization. Every day we consume milk. It's pasteurized. It's, uh, it's again a heat treatment uh, technology. It's very simple technology. Juices get pasteurized. We all drink juices on every day. Pasteurization is a very simple but uh, proven technology. The talking we spoke about. A septic packaging. You know, a septic packaging, a lot of us, I mean, you have a tetra pack, I saw a tetra pack, water in a tetra pack. Uh, but, you know, it is something that is used to keep milk for almost 180 days. Juices for most So, septic packaging is, in fact, the brand. It's, it's another, I mean, you, you have ultra <coughs> treatment and rapidly getting cooled so that uh, the, the, the food gets preserved in the cloth. There are others, like, you know, hurdle technology. One can keep going on. Uh, freezing is a great technology. Simple, but very, very simple technology. Drying. Uh, you know, spices. They're nothing but dried. And it's a simple way, you know, we used to do that, you know, we used to make butter and keep it. Uh, pickling is a great technology to preserve for a long time. It's a combination of salt, it's a natural preservative, oil, it's natural preservative, uh, sugar is again a natural preservative. Uh, of course, I don't advocate adding uh, chemical preservatives, but 
yes, at times you need to. Uh, that's another way of doing it. So, uh, various ways, the list goes on. Uh, then coming to packaging, uh, packaging is also very interesting. You know, uh, one simple is you'll find ketchup and sachets. Uh, it's something about foil-based, metal foil-based technology that keeps food uh, uh, fresh for a long period of time. Uh, then another one is uh, modified atmosphere packaging, where you replace one air with another air. So you typically find your snacks. The snacks you'll find it's like a pillow bag. What happens? The oxygen is taken out and it's filled with nitrogen. Okay. Another one is uh, you take the oxygen out and fill it up with CO2 or carbon dioxide. That's another way in which you modify the atmosphere in the packaging and uh, you enhance the life of the product. Uh, we spoke about high value packaging, which is like a oil based packaging that, that comes in. Then, uh, as I said, oxygen is an, is an enemy, so you have something that absorbs oxygen. Uh, from uh, put in the packaging that absorbs oxygen and enhances the life of the food. Uh, UV blocking, as I said, uh, sun, sun rays is also extremely valuable. So UV blocking is also another way of <coughs> packaging that you could do. Uh, lots of other stuff, Tetrapack is also a classic example. So there are lots of options that we have. So the whole idea is about uh, one has to make it big. So uh, I would give kudos to uh, people like uh, an organization like Tetra Pak because you know uh, they educated the consumers that milk in a Tetra Pak remains fresh for a long time. Uh, juices in a Tetra Pak with, are without preservatives and can remain fresh for almost six months. So, so we need packaging uh, uh, companies to go and educate and also go ahead and put in a lot of machines, equipments, etc. So canning is another important uh, area. So aluminum canning or metalized canning is another important area to take life to food ahead. So that's in a nutshell, uh, but I would say typically just to give you a perspective, only in India, only 5 to 6 percent of the food consumed is organized, branded and packaged. 95 percent is unfortunately unorganized, unpackaged, unbranded. So the opportunity is huge. Uh, so we are probably on an inflection curve where inflection curve where the S is going like this. The penetration of packaged foods, penetration of processed foods is going up. We staying in urban India probably feel, hey, maybe this number doesn't seem right to me 5%. I eat packaged processed foods every day in my life. But that's not the case with large number of people. Our thali has remained more or less the same. It hasn't changed. So our innovations probably have happened in <coughs> Time like in the morning time or in the evening time where we experiment with different kinds of food, like like number times happen in the afternoon and evening. But our, our breakfast, lunch, and dinner has more or less remained the same for decades or for centuries. It hasn't changed much. But it's exciting times of food ahead. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your yeah, uh, Wonderfully said. I mean, I really go by what you said. Uh, our operating sector is playing a very big role in this country. But then with about 140 crore population, and with the schemes which uh, the ministry has come out with, like EMS and scheme and all that, there's a lot of encouragement and a boost for the sector to further move on. I'm sure companies like yours can just hand only smaller companies and the smaller startups, and then they will create a brand for them, make them an private label and take them forward. I just want to ask you, like you talked about, you touched on a very important aspect of uh, oxygen. You talked about modified atmosphere packaging. Or uh, you talked about uh, anything that has been put in a plastic. Now, how to get rid of this plastic menace? So, in a modified moisture packaging, so ultimately, you are modulating, you are regulating and controlling oxygen and carbon dioxide, based on the permeability of the film. But somehow, like, you know, if I have to use, uh, say, a paper instead of uh, plastic, there will be no diffusion. I can't preserve fruits, vegetables, and using paper. So, what do you think could be the better alternate to the plastic? And because there's some companies which aren't working on the bioplastics, like the flex uh, industries and uh, there's a few more who have uh, done some work on uh, you know, making bioplastics. But the problem is with the thermal sealability. If you have to, if I have to take out the permanent areas today, and if I have to pack them in uh, using modified moisture packaging, and then I have to seal that, and then export that, problem is like, you know, the, the, the packet gets ruptured. <laughs> so what do you think we can do further 
will do a packaging which is little bar degradable or some alternative kind of packaging where we somehow don't get rid of this uh, plastic. Sure. Uh, absolutely a uh, relevant <coughs> uh, question. Uh, it's like uh, going back to basics, you know. Uh, but having said that, I would say plastic is a necessary evil. It's here to say. Uh, something that you can't say, you know, uh, I'm sorry to use one example, one of our neighboring countries said, you know, we're not going to use any, any uh, I mean, any pest, chemical based pesticides and fertilizers, and it went through a bad time. Uh, so, it is pretty easy to kind of take a decision. I mean, I still remember industry had a challenge when there was a decision taken that there would be no plastic straws allowed. Uh, and we did not have alternatives, and there was a particular deadline. So, I think industry has managed to figure out paper straws and get the fact, but had to go through a great amount of difficulty. Uh, so having said that, I would say uh, it's a necessary evil, it's here to stay, uh, but the idea is how do you minimize it and most importantly how do you manage it. So, uh, you know, plastic waste management as a vertical has now come up in every organization. Uh, we are a small organization but we have a dedicated resource who takes care of plastic waste management. Uh, and ensures that you know we do our good to the organization. I mean, it's mandated now, and uh, we do our bit to the society as what we can do. Uh, however, I'm not a technological expert to say how one can probably avoid it, but I'm sure you know uh, there are ways and means. One is getting back to basic. So I would say wherever there is a possibility of avoiding single-use plastic, one should. Uh, but at the same time, it's a balancing act. One can't say, hey, I completely, like, it's like fossil fuels. You can't say, I completely eliminate the petrol diesel from tomorrow. It won't work. Uh, but one has to probably see how you manage it well. Uh, and as I said, it's an SSA, you will be there to stay. I don't know if I answered it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we go with the theory of, like, you know, if you can't eliminate it, at least minimize it. Maybe let, let's have a little uh, lesser conservation than taking forward. Uh, uh, you know, we have this World Food Day, and the World Food Day is celebrated on 6th of October every year. And this time, the UN's theme was Water is Life. So when, when we organized this function at our institute, we said that we are going to introduce a curriculum in our institute, in our, one of the BTEC and the courses. We talk about the water meeting and water auditing. And then we came out with the, uh, the recommendations, three recommendations which will come up soon, is that every industry, should write, we should mention their annual report that how much of water they have used the previous year and how much they have used in this year. So that what is the level of production, the use of water, and how they have reused it. So, I mean, this is the way to sensitize. We are not a regulator. We can just make recommendations. Because as a part of FSSA, earlier when I was working at scientific university, FSSA, yes, we knew that, you know, we have that uh, power to say that we are regulating the industry, so the plastics part has to be banned, has to be banned. And you give a deadline and then let industry work on uh, methodologies and come out with it. But I'm really, I can, uh, I can probably say that today, uh, since I was an advisor there, I was like, you know, a lot of straws have come out with, uh, which were being used now with, uh, with the fruit uh, packs and the packs and all that. And a good amount of research went into it, and uh, the Indian, uh, uh, the Indian population largely, you know, in, they are not all that well educated, well versed with the public, somehow innovated, and brought these straws, and now which you say that they are biodegradable ones. So there is a lot of potential in the Indian mind. Indian brains the best. I mean, you see, wherever we go, we create our visuals and we get our heart classes. So I think uh, with lots of technological interventions, uh, where there I feel that there is a way to go together. Industry and academia, if we work together and take on board the government as well as the regulator, I think that will be the way forward. Just to add, uh, you know, we've done some fantastic work with the Punjab Agro University uh, in Ludhiana, uh, and we've got a fair bit of uh, good work in terms of uh, tomato specifically. You know, we used to import a lot of tomato uh, because we were never getting tomato paste. Uh, you know, we were never getting a, a tomato of a particular color. And the color, just to give you a perspective, what makes a good ketchup is the color of it. You can't add any colors. <laughs> Today, I'm very happy to say with the Jap Agro and the Agro University in the Jap, we have been able to 100% get our tomatoes made out of the tomatoes. So, and it's finally, I'll be thankful to also, I'm happy to say we're exporting it to some other country, which is as in taste format, uh, but we're able to do that. So, it's quite possible. Yeah. Yeah,
So fruit, apple started becoming available almost all the year. That was a facility for storing 12,000 tons. Today, country has almost 3 lakh tons plus uh, storage capacity for apple. It doesn't use any chemicals. It is simply a place <coughs> of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and uh, humidity and temperature, which extend the shelf life of the apple. This technology is not uh, there for all the fruit and vegetable. Each fruit and vegetable has its own size and it has to be understood thoroughly before entering into that. The research papers from India are comparatively less, but from abroad you get a lot of uh, research paper and you can use that knowledge to uh, uh, use the most appropriate technologies needed process. Even then some research is required because uh, the uh, fruit, uh, fruits grown here are somewhat different. The variety could be different and other changes could be there. So we study that very carefully and then only go ahead. In the case of oranges, I when we started this in 2013, there was no uh, uh, coating or waxing of the oranges done in India, the Nagpur orange I am talking about. Allfresh was the first company in India to start experimenting with that. We studied the machine supplied in India for this purpose and we found they were not working. They were causing uh, damage to the fruit. We went abroad to fruit logistics and studied their machines. And of course, those machines were very expensive. Each machine was costing two to three crore rupees. We didn't have that capital. And therefore, we uh, did some, uh, you can call it bizarre or some uh, minor changes, modifications in our machines and make it workable. Yeah, and change, it, change the some system of working also. And with those things, we were first time able to prove that we can uh, do waxing of oranges in India. So uh, that time, Bhatri, uh, Bhatri Bhagavad and this easy day, that was a change. We showed our samples to them and they immediately approved the samples. And that is all you can do this time. Why I am why mentioning all this is, you see, in India, the oranges are supply chain was going on. The life was five, uh, five, seven days, eight days, or something. And if you see the losses in the supply chain, they were handled at thirty percent. We gained the customer confidence only because, like, I supply a huge quantity of this oranges to Guwahati, Siliguri, Nepal, far flung areas because there the perception of quality between our group and that of the others who have not waxed properly, there was very distinct and that is how gave us the premium and the ability to continue and uh, grow our business. So my point is only this, if you understand the things, the knowledge and technology, that is very, very crucial to any success of uh, the business, particularly in the fruit and vegetables. We are used to seeing apple, oranges, all fruits being sold daily in the market, buying, eating, etc. But the supply chain, as of now, because large number of commission agents and other people involved, they don't have the understanding and the knowledge uh, and the technology. In our country, um, uh, that kind of ecosystem for training them also has some problem. The packaging requirement, the fruits uh, different. The earlier the wooden boxes were used for supply of apples and the oranges, etc. We have replaced all of them. We use cartons, we can use crates also, depending on the customer preference. So these changes, I feel, they can be driven by the academia. If they do more and more research in these areas, that will be immensely beneficial. Let me also put in some other things which have contributed to uh, us and they relate to the government policy. One of the things I would say the government did in the last 10 years was they amended the APMC law. Earlier people like us were not able to go to the farmer directly and buy the fruits. You had to take licenses and if I give you the experience of Maharashtra, Every taluka, every district, I have to take a separate uh, APMC license, and they used to ask for the 
pipeline is uh, empty and various type of things, which we thought is not possible for us. Those laws have been amended. That is a huge positive for any new entrepreneur who come uses knowledge to change the sector. Secondly, one of the things which is not celebrated in this uh, sector is the huge improvement that has taken place in the road infrastructure. All the fruit, vegetables mostly are going by road. And earlier, my truck from uh, Nagpur to Delhi used to take almost uh, 48 to 60 hours. Now they come less than 36 hours. So the, the perishable uh, items, you can imagine the difference it would make to them in terms of the freshness when they reach the consumer stable. Because the site is, time has reduced in the process. This is, uh, uh, the, we talk about the infrastructure benefits, etc. But I would say that the people in the rural areas which are into the business of fresh produce, they are huge beneficiaries of the infrastructure and I think government should continue this to improve even the rural uh, road infrastructure as well. And third thing, the uh, ecosystem which has uh, developed with regard to startups in India, in the food sector also, in the fresh produce also. I see a lot of IIT engineers getting into this, improving the supply chain. They are also getting, uh, got into the uh, manufacture of the grilling machines of the fresh produce, which is uh, a big relief because all the coated machines in the sector are very, very costly and these machines which we now use are much cheaper and that is uh, a big change. The uh, other benefits uh, of all this is that you see, we have not, uh, we are using in the orange and apples, etc. There are a large number of fruits and vegetables, each has its own specific environment. Like in the case of uh, plums also, we take, we are, uh, Allfresh was the first company in India to take the plums from the Himachal and the Uttarakhand right up to Bangalore. We experimented, it took us time, we suffered some initial losses uh, in the process. But now that process is established. Now last season, which, which was the summer, 150 tons of this uh, plums we supplied in Bangalore. The market has also gone. Earlier there was no market because the food never could reach there in good condition in those places. Now we are looking at the farmers there, I am sure, will benefit hugely because uh, we will be supplying their food to many areas in the southern and western India. And I am sure. Uh, help both the consumer as well as the farmer. So these uh, are my thoughts about the sector. I agree with uh, my previous uh, speakers that uh, safety of the food is very important. Some things are essential, some things are uh, necessary and we have to manage uh, those things. And in the case of fresh produce, the more freshness is there when it reaches the consumer table, uh, table the larger will be the demand. Luckily in India you might have all felt that the demand for fresh produce in good condition, quality condition is really growing very fast. As I have seen if the food is good quality the demand is, uh, your margin in demand is very high. If the food is inferior quality, you suffer losses, you, uh, you are not able to manage the supply chain. So these are my thoughts and uh, I feel that uh, long way to go because we are still scratching the surface. The quantity of food that we process, etc. in our back houses where we use all the best of machines is just uh, not even 1% of the total production in the country. So long way to go. Thank you. <coughs> The back house culture, you know, people the but one point that I can't agree more with you is there's the machinery that is being used, whether it's for managing the supply chain or for processing. It's all being imported. And the companies uh, love to import a refurbished machine, then to purchase the machine from now in country. And it's rightly said that you know there are uh, now like there are brains from IITs and getting along with horticultural universities. 
No, you know, just I saw when I was just walking through call number two. There was one gentleman who met us about four years back and they had taken a technology from us that was Nayach of Anglo. He's built up his own grader now. It's a, it's a color sorter with size grading that he's doing with automatic packaging. He showed me that, you know, and he, he, he ran the machine in front of me. He showed me that these are apples. Now these are 60% red and these are 80% red. And they were getting segregated in no time. So I think somewhere down the line, some common intervention is also required to ensure that these kind of people who have, who are Indians, who have used their own mind, who have used their own resources, and I asked him, if you got some kind of funding, he said, no, it's all my own money. So they have this passion, they have this fire in their belly to make it big, to do something for the country. And same example I'll give you, there's one company called Xenon Corporation in Bangalore. They have supplied uh, this Inu grader, as uh, Mr. Java was talking about, to Punjab, Ekru, and Bajinda, where they, they do about you know, roughly about one ton an hour of color grading. Because Inu also have this problem, you know, of uh, the color, even though the three color also matters a lot. So these companies have to be provided with some kind of incentives and you know, some kind of incentivizing. That's what I've been telling my ministry also. That when we are we are setting up, uh, you know, do this. PM, KSY, PM, FMA, PLA schemes, so many schemes are coming from the government. There should be some kind of incentivization for indigenous machinery manufacturers, especially for the supply chain and value chain management in future. I hope uh, you know, our thought will uh, see the light of the day one day and we will find many more entrepreneurs will have more of made in India, made in India, and make, made for the world kind of machines. Uh, now, Dr. Halde is uh, from the oil industry, he is, but he is a very eminent food technologist. What the, both of you have been saying is, is there is a lot of wastages in food. If you talk to, you know, we, are, we were supposed to be having a panel from Premika, finally, when they dropped out the last moment. And that's one company, this is based out of uh, very close to where they have uh, their farms, and they are in Badovan and they are in Philor. Because I have been a student of PA, so all this, and I've been working in Louisiana for about 16 plus years. <laughs> I'm pretty familiar with those places. Now, they process about roughly about, you know, uh, about 100 tons a day of tomato in the season. And minimum, what we, the, the processing waste which comes to about 3 to 4 percent, I mean, I'm talking about the bare minimum that comes out. It's the peel and the seeds. In China, there are plants which have the capacity of 10 tons per hour. And all the peel, the pomes that is left out, has some secondary use. It doesn't go as a cattle feed, but there are the proteins which are getting extracted out of it, the oil that is getting extracted out of it, and that is being exported from China to different countries. And very less amount that has been left is being sold there. Whereas companies like Premica, I'm sure, uh, uh, I'm not sure, uh, Sajri Farms, uh, one of the villages who are processing for uh, Kisan, Delmoth, Right. Might be finding this, they're finding very tough to dispose of this waste. They sometimes, in fact, have to pay to the farmers to take this waste so that they can be, can be used for cattle feed. So, as a food technologist, like you and you, you know, you are one of the leaders in uh, the, the parachute oil is, is well known, the Maricos, uh, one Safola is, we all use that for our daily, daily use. So, do you think there is a potential of getting Oil from the tomato seeds, though the quantity at the moment will be less, but like just the virgin coconut oil that you come out with, or the high specialty oil that you come out with, will your company or would you, you know, uh, tell them or exhort them to come out to you know work with institutes like ours or others and come out with a technology which is cost effective and finally come out with a product? Also. Your thoughts about it? Thank you. Uh, Hello. Thank you, Dr. Oberoi, sir. I am actually accidental speaker here. Because I was a speaker in morning session and he suddenly while going, he said, you have to sit here. So I was not even aware what is the topic. So, but thanks for showing that conference. But sir, I am really thankful you for bringing me here. Not for the question which you asked, but I am going to answer something which is, when I was a young food technologist, 1994, when I passed out from my meeting, my first job was in ECC Agrotech. And sir, just to correct you, Mr. Naresh, that first company who exported oranges in the ACC I was a protocolist. 
and I have developed the process of vaccine, free cooling, cold storage. And what you said is absolutely right. Before answering to your question, as a food technologist, let me tell you the chemistry of the fruit. Fruit is a living thing. because students are there. When we pluck the fruit, till the time it is on the tree, mother is feeding the fruit. The moment you pluck the fruit, nutrient itself are actually getting degraded against the oxygen. And uh, actually, my sir said that oxygen is not the enemy. Enemy is not, but oxygen is converted into the energy because naturally fruit requires energy. And it is a fight against the available sugars. And naturally, the degradation process starts. So friends, whenever you are handling any fruit, please be sure it is a live commodity. हमारे यहाँ पे हैंडलिंग हम लोग अपने जूते बाटा में बहुत अच्छे से पकड़ के रखते हैं लेकिन फ्रूट्स वेजिटेबल से उसको अनफॉर्चुनेटली बी इंडियन डू नॉट बाय एनी फ्रूट्स वेजिटेबल अनलेस यू एक्चुअली प्रेस इट दो बार प्रेस करेंगे तीन बार प्रेस करेंगे दीज आर दर हैबिट्स वी शुड स्टॉप इट एंड फ्रूट्स वेजिटेबल आर लिविंग कपड़ फ्रूट्स वेजिटेबल इंडिया में एक मिलियन मैट्रिक टन फ्रूट दो सौ दस मिलियन मैट्रिक टन वेजिटेबल दे आर दिवन गिविंग यू ऑल एंड ऑक्सीडेंट यू नेम इट एंथोसाइनिंगलर इनग्रीडियंट अनलेस यू इट दैट टू यूर प्लेट मिनिमम एटी ग्राम हाउ यू हैव अ फ्रूट इन मॉर्निंग और ड्यूरिंग द डे हाथ पर करो मोस्ट फ्रूट या फ्रूट प्रोडक्ट बिल्कुल खाना चाहिए नहीं तो आपको गोली देनी पड़ेगी आपके पास दो ऑप्शन है कोविड में सबने खाए होंगे फ्रूट्स वेजिटेबल तो कोविड के बाद क्यों नहीं खाए भाई बिल्कुल खाने चाहिए हमारे इंडिया का सबसे बड़ा प्रॉब्लम है सर वी हैव डेवलप्ड द वैक्सीन आई विल टेल यू द स्टोरी हाउ दिस एक्चुअली ऑरेंज इज आई यूज्ड टू टॉक टू द ऑरेंज व्हाई यू आर बिकमिंग पेल व्हाई यू आर बिकमिंग डार्क व्हाई इज ऑक्सीजन लो ऑक्सीजन इंजरी व्हाट इज द वैक्सीन में सर हम लोग क्या करते हैं प्लग कर देते उसके जो चेन होते हैं ना इट्स अ वी आर एक्चुअली रिड्यूसिंग द ऑक्सीजन बैरियर एंड इन द and there are so it's so difficult fruit is so difficult to handle and you require a technology for that greening the greening is a technology coming back to the challenges uh, where is how uh, you have posed the waste utilization but i am saying you first the main utilization is not happening waste is the second main utilization of fruits vegetable there is a huge scope as sir has said only 2 3% are getting post harvest and overall sir is the expert on the post harvest I was a student then. We used to read 30% of post-harvest losses. Today that number is probably is what's it? 20 by 30. Let's see. It is a crime. Fruits, vegetables are getting sold on the roadside, and shoes are in the AC room. We need to really think about it, and we should be paying high. Please pay high to the fruits and vegetables because they are good quality. Do not think about. It is very important to invest in the health. If you don't pay, then why the brand will come back? Why they will invest? Because you have to give that actually the good quality. Otherwise, you pay the medical bill. Then you have to compromise. What do you want to do? Food technologies, the fruits vegetable is the one of the ignorant area. We all talk about fruits vegetable, but processing. I will give you the story of kiwi, New Zealand. And TV, everybody knows. Their cricket team is also called TV. One of the dirtiest fruit ever. One of the dirtiest fruit ever. The consumer is saying brown color, not good color. Very very hairy fruit. Not supposed to be. We required a chicken fruit. But and green color pulp, which is a contrast with outer color. Just imagine, outer is brown, inside is green. What this kind of combination? We got a banana white, orange orange, superb color. But this kiwi is in all way rejected lately. But these people made a brand out of it. We need to learn from this country how they made it. Why we cannot do fruit processing? I was actually talking to Honorable Nitin Gadkari sir. During COVID, we must have consumed ten thousand crore of vitamin C tablets. I am not against the tablet. Why not orange is given to all the hospitals? Sir? One orange is ninety six milligram of uh, ascorbic acid, the vitamin C. You are direct fresh fruit. we should think some innovation and all the students all horticultural processing equipment dr obey roy it is a absolutely he said it we do not have we used to import from fmc fmc company 
finding of the oranges and unfortunately our oranges are not processable oranges. Our blue jacketed oranges are not actually having that kind of sturdy skin which can be, will have bruises only actually uh, the oil will come out of the uh, pill and which is giving you some kind of black spot. European people buy the orange by the eyes. We buy the orange by the money, but they buy by from the eyes. We need to go very, very deep. So many challenges, Uberasa, on the technology, right temperature, and one more thing, do not copy paste by the external oranges. Clementine, tangerine, Nakpur Sandra requires some different temperature. I will give my books that I published in 1997. Our temperature of recooling is different. So, indigenous research is required over I saw because most of who just copy the some research happening in the California. I am fortunate to be trained in the California for one month and I have seen that whatever their research is for their fruit, not applicable in India. We need to have a research in India. Our equipment, because we know how to handle those and we have all great scientists. What has happened in the dairy, beverages? Why it cannot happen to the fruits, vegetables? Very well can happen. And last question, what you said, Agarasa, mango is the fruit, which is the king of the all fruits, but there is the oil which comes from, the fat which comes from the mango store. And our association is working on that to value addition. And that could be a very good, actually, the fat for replacing some of the established fat. And we are working on that. And you touch to the very right, waste to wealth, which Honorable Prime Minister also has said. There is a enough room, enough room, but somebody has to start. Before that, as a consumer, you start paying for the brand, there will be growth of food processing. But if you start negotiating, if you start, if you give the pennies, you will get the only nuts. You will not get anything. So we should be ready to give little extra, and the brand and the investment should happen into the sector, and the employment for the food technologies. Thank sir, you, sir. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, one thing I want to ask. Sir, you told about vaccinated orange. Just you I tell you, it's my job. You are probably in WhatsApp in the university. In one WhatsApp university, there is an apple. It says, there is a chance to get out of it. They say, wax, wax. Let me tell you all vaccination, which is being allowed in India. Carbon Called as a climatic <laughs> Just an example. Sir, mango. Banana is the non climatic because it required external ripening after plucking. So, jo cheap paid pe patti hai, usko kehte hai climatic. And non climatic means usko external ek push hona hai. Means uska respiration badana chahi. Vaccination basically are preventing against the transpiration and oxidation. It is absolutely scientific way of doing it. And there is no harm, it is allowed, only the wax which is allowed as per the FSSA and how much to pluck, 50% force only, not more than that. Usko oxygen injury nahi karni. Absolutely sir, absolutely, it's a science and it's a great science. I will forward you some of my presentation, ripening, very fascinating uh, of ripening as a process. What a chemistry, 36 sub-processes are taking place in ripening from maturation to ripening and great conversion of color, texture, sugars, texture and taste and aroma, everything. It's such a fascinating science about ripening. Hardly we know. We store the lemon at the uh, refrigeration at the lower 4 degree. It will turn black because lemon storage temperature, sarne bola mai sarne. You need to study 11 degree. Then what are we learn? is 12 degree. You should not store in the directly in the freeze. Every fruit is a living commodity. Respect the fruit and the woman. Important. <laughs> Important. Delicate. Handle with care. Absolutely. We need to handle with care. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, Rock this week. Uh, who started this and uh, Riker Beverages. Because uh, it came out from Manoj Raikal, who is a co founder of the company. And uh, that product, whatever the juices they got, let's say the shelf life of about 
Uh, so that's worked brilliantly. So that's an area probably to work on. Uh, and once that is done, I'm sure uh, more and more today, you know, today it's a guardrail saying that any temperature control, don't do it. But once this confidence comes in, we will also start doing it. Okay. I think uh, I can move on from there. There's something that I see is the, the on-form uh, supply chain and on-form processing, on-form storage. A farmer, especially with a perishable produce like the fruits and vegetables. No, uh, I'll just give a small example of uh, the rose petals that I've been giving everywhere. Is that there is a farmer who grew up in, uh, uh, in close to Ajmer, <coughs> where they bought a machine from China that's called the heat pump dryer. And what this guy does is he collects roses from, he's, he's got a contract uh, with so many farmers there, he gets all the roses from there. And he dries those rose uh, petals there and extracts the water out of them. And that water is being ex exported to countries like even the Gulf in the countries of the Gulf as well as U.S. and the dried petals are being given to the Haldirans and Kanti Swedes and others for uh, making the you know, sweets and some of that goes for making the Kulkan. So I'm also looking at something like in case, uh, you know, the on-farm concept that was, uh, can be put up in our country in a way that is a very organized way where we have on-farm grazing, we have on-farm drying, we have on-farm packaging. Because the major abuse, the major enemy of for storage and transport in foods, vegetables and water. So any thoughts on that, on you know taking it forward? Like you know, we have the solar because in India like I don't know, we are blessed to have a good amount of solar, like the country like Norway, the one from Canada. So what do you think, like you know, if a uh, company like yours can work with companies, academy, family organizations and we develop of more of these kind of units. Like I'll give a small example, even Vinay knows about it, it was really like, you know, when I was the it wasn't uh, anything to do with the storage, the way, I mean, uh, drying and all that. We had developed an onion heat offer. Because that is, it is costing a lot of drudgery. The lady couple what they do in uh, Karnataka and Marseille, they just put it uh, between the two feet and it was act as a supper. The hands will have uh, blisters and a lot of issues and all that. So we developed that onion detox with that and we had integrated with the bread. A small intervention. So we talked to the Karnataka government, they included that in the subsidy scheme and you know, gave it to about 12 uh, uh, farmer police organizations in the district of Karnataka. And the beauty was that one of the farmers who took this technology, he was a larger farmer, he started using our machine, he started using the grader. And you should charge the other farmers who would be additional that would be the case for that. So farmer created an enterprise on his own. So I think this is something which is really doable and the companies like they who have you know, uh, technological backstopping who are really interested in this kind of research, I, I see a big potential doing that. Your thoughts on that? Yeah. yeah, thank you. So uh, I think uh, we all know uh, let me just repeat that India is the second largest uh, producer of fruits and vegetables in the world. This is a really a good position to be. And uh, as uh, my previous speaker also mentioned, that the knowledge uh, and the uh, research work done within India for our produce, for uh, uh, processing and preserving life, value addition, is comparatively less compared to what we see in the donor's country. So I personally have the opinion that because we are focused on the understanding the science of the fruits uh, much better and the uh, Vekul as a company has that philosophy. Large number of uh, senior Vekul employees are from IITs and uh, I have and their knowledge and system we are working is definitely different. So we will be ready to collaborate and cooperate with any of the academic institution which is uh, going to work on that. And we will really encourage and uh, on that. So you see, and the number of fruits, vegetables grown in India is very large. And for each of the fruit, you need to uh, do this research work. And the sky is the limit because uh, you can be, if uh, both in the free harvest uh, intervention, if you improve the quality of the fruit that is produced and uh, 
and subsequently in the post harvest you preserve that quality, you can, uh, I mean, they make a huge difference in the export of these uh, uh, fruits to other countries. The, one of the points uh, which you mentioned about the zespri as a brand of the kiwi, which you, which you were talking about the kiwi, it is really a brand to be studied by, I would say, the academy of the Indian uh, who are involved in the fresh produce or even any FMCG company. How they have mastered the technology that any kiwi which you see the mark of zespri, you can be sure that the quality when you are, it comes to your table will be most optimum in taste and quality. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, a, it's, well, it's a cooperative. Okay. It's a cooperative. Uh, it does, uh, the last that I knew, it does a business for almost close 150 crores in India. Yeah. I, 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 I couldn't believe that <laughs> Indians eat so much of TV. <laughs> uh, 150 crores, and that is Zespri only. It's, yeah, it's yeah. not 100% TV is not Zespri. I know, part I know. of it is Zespri. So it's a it's a cooperator. It's a cooperator. Yeah, it's avocado. Yeah, it's avocado. You you will uh, be surprised to know buying kiwis in Bombay, Delhi, or big cities, uh, no big deal. You can go and buy. It. There is a small place near Sagar called Damod. It was available there also. And so the penetration of the supply chain is because of quality. Because they are done many research work to make sure it reaches in good condition as well. And also one more insight which I picked up when I was speaking to one of them was it's only 5% of the recipe TV are sold through modern form exports. 95% yes. is sold through the regular yes. fruit and vegetable vendor who's on the street. I agree. <laughs> so it's, I don't know, I got it's a rich man's fruit. No, yeah. no it is not. No, I, I think in India also, <laughs> I would like to mention that. You see, India exports a large quantity of grapes from Nasik and the other areas to Europe. In the window available, I think, February, March, etc. This is also an opportunity for the Indian Academy to study what they do, how they have succeeded, because if it can be replicated to other fruits and vegetables, you can imagine the kind of difference it can make to the lives of farmers and all the intermediaries uh, involved in the, in the business. So these uh, are the case studies which need to be studied uh, and uh, their learning should be applied to the other fruits. Uh, I think uh, students and faculty will clearly take uh, note of all this, what, is, what has been discussed here. It's been a wonderful session. For well, last thing, you know, somebody asked me, you know, as a director of Fresh Tomatoes, we were as director about three, three months back. What do you think would be your major stress on research? I said, if somebody can develop an on-farm uh, dryer for me, and we, we extract that water out of the fruit, the vegetable that has been dried, so that I would want that water also to be consumed and the product also to be consumed. Because that water will be a natural water, having vitamins and minerals which are inherently present there. Now there are companies like Ocean and all that, they draw water, they, 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 they purify that and then add water from the minerals and other things into it. So if we are able to do that kind of thing, that will become really a sustainable kind of technology. So I think we have some wonderful discussions and before we close, a uh, quick one or two questions if you have. Yeah. It's, it's not a question from Sikhar, it's a correction to Kargul sir. That banana is a planetary fruit and and cause you know it ripens after the harvest. Yeah. And you know, like it's a light planet. Hello everyone, I'm from WR India, it's a research organization. So I had a question, so you, first of all, it was a very interesting discussion. Not all panel discussions are so engaging. It was uh, very, uh, very informative and very uh, interesting. So my question is, uh, there's a big problem of price volatility in fruits and vegetables that also lead to a lot of losses, post-harvest losses and wastage. And it is also a big gap or a challenge for processing. So for example, the prices go high, you can't source it for a less amount of money because it's not profitable for you to process that. 
So how can diverse players like you, yeah, what do you suggest that, what is the solution for the price volatility problem in fruits, especially tomato, onion? So before uh, you said, because we are actually professional to answer this, but I have a very, very valid question you ask. I'm a far my father is a farmer and we have actually, sir, put uh, Jain irrigation, that uh, Jain irrigation companies uh, still this orange. And my father sold orange, which is actually Mosambi. Orange is a Mosambi basically, not the Sakra is the Mandarin. So, 20 rupees a kg in the wholesale. And the same product is available in the Nagpur retail at 120. So, what farmers get only one fifth of the contribution, what otherwise the supply chain middlemen take 80% of. And it has happened in the last week. So, what your question is very right. Unless we remove the in between hands, there are five hands in between. Farmer to consumer, there are five hands in the traditional way. Unless you directly put to the company. Unless and until this money goes to the processor, they will be able to invest. So we have to do this and that's why I wouldn't talk about it. Very valid question. I'm just supporting your question. Now answer will be given back. That is it. Yeah, I'll give you the answer. I hope uh, it helps you. You see, let's say orange. The bigger size fruit is preferred in the north area. Medium size goes to south and the smaller size goes to the east. So for a farmer, it is very difficult to segregate and send. Because you have to send truckload. Less than that, the logistic cost will be so high, it is not possible. So only the company which has this ability, who have been able to spread out, it have initially invested huge money in uh, doing that marketing infrastructure which they have created. And uh, they only can help and do that. We are accused today in Nagpur area as uh, buying uh, fruit at the highest rate and causing problem to many of the traders. La we entered there in 16 and for 2-3 years they <coughs> gave different stories about us, don't give the fruit to them, they will do this, they will do that. Now of course we are supplying almost 60 to 70 tons of oranges from there per day to different parts of the country. So these challenges are there and my theory has always been wherever there are constraints of some kind, if the industry or the uh, business people are not able to handle, government should do investment. Like for us, we needed infrastructure to uh, sort, create, fruit and pack in the best of technology. We found it very difficult, it was not there. As I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, although uh, for both sides, they are the first company to start exporting vaccine, etc. But when I went there in 2013, I went to a place called in Jhalawad, where one old dilapidated machine of uh, uh, vaccine was lying unused for the last five, uh, four years. It was installed in 2009. The uh, chief minister inaugurated all those photos were there, but it was not in use. Similarly, I have seen a place in Morshi, in Karanja, in the Nagpur area, in the, those areas also machines are there, but they are not there. In fact, if you see the building, where those machines are there, I think machines were installed in 95 or 97 or somewhere around that time. They were not in use and we were in badly, bad need of the infrastructure to work on that. We used those machines, we invested further money, we improved those to the best of uh, technology available in India and that has made the change. And because we supply to all the parts of the country, we are able to get the highest value. So the IP today also in the orange, let's say, the uh, infrastructure in use for only four months. So which business will invest money in are using the infrastructure for more? For mango, there is a plant in the uh, uh, this now which is used for one and a half months only. So I am sure it is impossible for any business to invest money, whole infrastructure, getting land change appro approvals and all those things, you don't know how much uh, it takes to <laughs> set up infrastructure and use it for only one and a half. So there, and you see mango, huge opportunity is there for export, for within India, extending life by 30 days, or everything is known and available. It is only the ability to get infrastructure and investment together 
and government has an important role to play. Uh, yes, Amit, of all, I mean, uh, I, uh, I mean, I don't think we have uh, time to take another question. But I'll just take uh, leave for the uh, uh, the last session when we had discussion of logistic and support. Mr. Vignesh from we could talk about the crate. Like we have those bikes, no rapid and all that. You keep it somewhere, and somebody else picks up on it. Because crate also is a cost attached to it. And all these tomatoes and mangoes, these things are being either being sold in corporate boxes or in crates. Well, it's always mandatory not to have those crates. And in Canada, they have this technology called recyclable crates, foldable crates. You fold the crates and they get back to the normal place. So when you're when you, you know, transporting tomatoes from Kolar in uh, Karnataka to Delhi or Punjab, it comes in the normal crates and those crates are collapsed, a collapsible crates, and they, they come back to. So how many do get? We get these tomato paste earlier from the US in bins. These bins used to be collapsible and they stayed back. Yes, sir. So small, small interventions and with IoT coming in. And then suppose, you know, I wrote, I mean, in fact, I submitted a project also wherein I said that if all these crates can have the RFID tags on them and then we have sensors which can sense the temperature and humidity and uh, the carbon tax that has been produced, the green that has been produced. And I know that for sure that the, the, the tomatoes the, or the mangoes which travel from uh, Ratnagiri or Kolal to Delhi. And I see that there is a there is, is a rise in carbon dioxide content. There is a rise in food content. I know this product, this produce is not going to reach uh, as output Mandi. I mean, at least 20 percent, 25 percent, 30 percent will just be wasted. And one spoiled fruit will spoil others as well. So if we can divert that product, the produce, the fresh produce to Nagpur Mandi, which is en route, while the truck is traveling towards Delhi, or to a process, but to any near near, near uh, most uh, processing facility, that will save work of total vegetable. I think with this thought that you know the government has to invest in uh, this sector and the academy and industry has to work together, we need to develop more uh, strategies, on-farm strategies, off-farm strategies and develop more machinery and industry and have more sustainable technologies. Value, I, addition. value addition of course. So I thank my esteemed panelists. I think we had a very absorbing uh, discussion, very engrossing session that we had. So uh, my heartfelt uh, gratitude to Mahesh ji, to Naresh ji, to Prabodh ji. And thank you very much for attending this. I hope uh, we will take back some information of whatever we discussed here. Thank you so much. Thank you all. The ministers arrange for mementos for the panelists. And I'd like to thank uh, our, our moderator, Obrador, for his lifetime for working here. Thank you.